As a video editor, this is my review of the M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro. Enjoy. Hello, hello, hello. So I've been using this MacBook for probably a month and a half now. And first thing I want to talk about is just list the three new changes here. So change number one is the design and the build. You're getting a new chassis, new look. Change number two is a new display. The display is completely new. It is very nice and we're going to get into that. And then change number three is the biggest change what this MacBook is known for. And that's the fact that it has a new custom made processor made by apple apple silicon and it's called the m1 pro this is the base model so this m1 pro chip has a 10 core cpu and a 16 core gpu as opposed to the m1 max chip which comes with the higher spec 16 inch models or higher spec 14 inches which has 10 core cpu and 32 core GPU, but this is the base model and we're going to talk about what this new chip offers and the benefits that come with this new chip. And this is probably the biggest thing here. But anyway, first thing I want to talk about is design and build. So new design, new build, it's much, much thicker, noticeably thicker. It is a bit heavier, not really noticeable, but if you compare, you can definitely tell. Also the hinge feels sturdier, which is nice for the build quality. It is bigger in every dimension and within this thickness you are getting new ports which is something that is very nice to have we shouldn't exactly be praising them because they should have been here to begin with but they are here which just completes the whole package so you're getting a hdmi a sd card slot and then three usb-c thunderbolts and magsafe is back so you can magnetically charge it i don't use magsafe just because it's easier for me to use that one usb-c cable that works with everything but it's a nice thing to have there and i do know a lot of people like that me personally when it came to the ports the biggest deal for me was the sd card slot because as a video editor i use sd cards a lot and it was annoying to have to use an adapter every time but something i don't know whether it was my sd card or whether it was just my macbook because my sd card works fine with absolutely everything else including my old 16 inch macbook pro when i use the adapter but now 90 percent of the time it doesn't even register when i put in my sd card and then five percent of the time it does register that there's an sd card inside but it just can't read the sd card and then the other five percent of the time it actually works it actually reads the sd card so i have to put it in and out and in and out hundreds of times i don't know whether this is just me i use a sandisk adapter from micro sd to standard sd but yeah, this shouldn't be an issue and it, it really does bug me because the SD card doesn't have a problem with anything else. Other than that, like I said, new design, it is kind of like retro, gives a retro vibe, which I personally really like. And I do like this flat top. It's no longer kind of curved around the edges of the top. It's all one flat panel. And you get that MacBook Pro logo engraved in the bottom, which I think looks real nice. Overall, it's a nice design. One thing I don't like about the design is the notch. And that brings me onto the display. Big change number two. So this is more or less a 4K display, which is nice to have, but the biggest change here is, well, A, it goes all the way to the bezels, except for the notch, but that's very nice. It gives you more screen real estate. And from a design perspective, it's more modern, but more importantly, it's a mini LED display. So it's basically like an OLED where each individual pixel has its own individual backlight. So some pixels can turn off when they are required to in the cases that you have a black image on the screen or parts of an image are black those pixels will turn all the way off instead of emitting light so they emit no light at all and that just gives you deeper truer blacks look at it in comparison to the 2019 16 inch macbook pro look at the black bars on the top and bottom of the video that's where you can really tell with this comes better colors and overall more vibrant more color efficient better display nicer to use and more accurate for people who have to deal with photos and videos and that kind of thing now secondly the display is also 120 hertz which apple like to label as pro motion what's so great about that well it means that the screen refreshes 120 times per second instead of 60 times per second so it's just smoother when using it and this just gives a better nicer smoother experience more premium experience and in the case that you're editing a 120 hertz timeline then from a functionality perspective, that's very functional. It allows you to actually perceive what you are editing 
how it is made to be. And then at the top, you get a notch. Now, from a design perspective, I hate this. I think it would look much better if it was a hole punch, especially since all it's storing is a FaceTime camera. So like all that you know massive square rectangular design is just unnecessary and it's ugly but it is functional in the fact that because of that notch instead of just creating one big bezel at the top you do get to use that space at the top as a menu bar and that just gives you more space to use whatever application you're running and get a higher resolution on things like final cut in the preview but the menu bar is only in line with the notch when you're not in full screen mode when you are in full screen mode then that entire top section just becomes a bezel so the notch doesn't interrupt anything but you do just kind of get a bezel like an old macbook pro now you could also argue that they could have put the face on camera in the top bezel and that really thin one it can be done but it wouldn't have been as good and that was another one of the improvements that they made this year they made the face on camera better instead of 720p it's 1080p it is noticeably better a hundred percent for me personally i don't really care it's like if i'm using the camera from my macbook i don't care about the quality anyway so i'm not that bothered but some people are i guess but i would have rather just kind of stored it up there but another thing you could say is the reason that they've created this notch here even unnecessarily in the case that they don't need all that space for a notch is because face id while it isn't here now I'm almost certain it's going to come in future models, they're just kind of preparing you for it. And the thing is, Face ID on a MacBook Pro makes the most sense, much more sense than on an iPhone. I hate Face ID on an iPhone, I have such a bad experience with it. But it makes so much sense on a laptop because you're less likely to be wearing a mask when you're using a laptop, so that's one thing. Second thing is your face is right in front of it all the time when you're using a laptop, and it just makes sense, and it's much faster and much more efficient than using a fingerprint. But as of right now, you're just getting the fingerprint on the top right corner of the keyboard, which I do like. It is a good fingerprint, but Face ID would be better. But anyway, that's the display done. Final thing that we talk about, and it's the biggest thing here, the M1 Pro chip. This is a new chip with the base model MacBook Pro 16 inch 10 core cpu 16 core gpu and let's just put the cores aside for a second the main selling point here why is this better than intel mainly because it's apple who are making it and apple do have a good track record in terms of making very fast and efficient chips why is it a good thing that apple are making it other than that track record well that's because apple also make their own software so if they create their own hardware and they create their own software then it allows for them to create a very efficient relationship between the two hardware that was specially made for mac os and the apps that run on mac os which is why if you use the m1 pro chip you're going to find better performance out of applications like final cut pro and logic and you will find it in other applications as well but especially these first party apple apps especially if you're using them you're going to find the experience is much better for example for me when i use optical flow which is a feature in final cut which allows you to basically slow down say 24 frame footage so you know it's like 10% its original speed and it doesn't look jittery because it guesses the frames in between and allows you to slow it down and make it look very good. If I wanted to use optical flow in like a three second clip, 4K clip, 30 frames on my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, that could take like 30, 40 seconds, 50 maybe, even maybe even a bit longer. But with this, it takes about 10 seconds. It's much, much faster. The second thing, which for me was very exciting and a very, very big deal for me is that the fans are silent. It doesn't require the fans to go full blast because of the way the M1 Pro handles everything, I guess. I have not heard the fans on this machine once, which is so good because the problem is when I come to record voiceovers like these, on my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, they would be going full blast. And I would have to do this little trick where I had to activate Siri while I was recording my voiceovers and it was just a pain in the ass. Now it's silent. Also my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro would just like, for no reason, it would just like blast the fans. Like, I have nothing open, I don't understand why. And you probably have that experience with older MacBooks and maybe even other computers, but here, fully silent, it's much, much better. The third thing in which the M1 Pro really, really shines is in the way it handles battery life. The battery life on this MacBook Pro is spectacular. It is really good. On one charge, this lasts me an entire day if I'm not doing editing. Maybe, maybe even with a bit of editing. But more or less on one charge, this can last me an entire day. And 
it is miles and when i say miles i mean miles better than the intel version so that's that basically with the m1 pro you get three benefits the first one is the battery life is much better second one is the speed is much much faster especially when it comes to first party applications exporting things and you know things which require processor heavy tasks and then thirdly no fans well there are fans but they're silent so with those three benefits just think of what it allows you to do in terms of the negatives of this machine and in terms of the m1 pro the only thing i can really think of is compatibility with other apps so i will have an application which basically allows you to change the machine code of certain applications that worked with intel to work with apple silicon like it does work pretty well the app will work as it did work on an intel mac even if the app developers haven't actually developed it for apple silicon yet sometimes you're gonna find yourself like just certain things are incompatible or they don't work as well as before now all these things are going to be fixed with time a hundred percent guaranteed but it's just a little bit of a rough patch you're gonna have to face as this transition into apple silicon continues we are deeper into this transition than we were like a year ago for example like significantly deeper so i say just give it another year and we you know you won't really have any of these compatibility issues anymore and by the way i don't want to like give you the wrong impression there really aren't that many incompatibility situations but for example when i connect my mx master to this mac using the logitech options app i have trouble running it like it won't work sometimes and then it will work and then it doesn't and then little situations like this that get really really irritating so you just need to be prepared for a few things not running exactly how you want them to so i just recommend you know searching up seeing how the apps that you want are going to work with this macbook but like i said time will fix any imperfections and there really aren't that many now those are the three main changes now for other smaller changes for example the speakers are improved not by a lot like it, it really it's not that noticeable i i don't even know if it's noticeable to be honest but it is an improvement and if you are like a big audio geek then you probably will notice a change here but the thing is the speakers on the previous 16 inch macbook pros were already amazing so these are also amazing but yeah that's pretty much it so to conclude i feel like with the intel models even the macbook pro lineup the lineup which i don't even think was worthy of being called pro because it was targeted towards the average consumer as the main target market it's like they were focusing on making it look more impressive than actually focusing on making it more impressive you know making it thinner trying to be innovative by just using the four usb-c ports and getting rid of everything else it was kind of just a look but now this macbook is finally targeted towards pro users that is the target market and that's the priority here and it's obvious and it does it very well they updated the three things that I wanted, the display, the design, and the processor, and with that, all its benefits, which is all that I wanted, and each update is effective. And overall, yes, it's expensive, but it's one of a kind, and there's no competition. If you're looking for a portable pro machine that runs Mac OS, and runs it well, and gives you all the benefits that this does, you're not gonna find anything that competes with it, unless you're considering going to Windows. So basically, in short, you know, if you're gonna make money off this machine, if you are a pro user and you're into Mac OS, this is the computer for you and like bear in mind that we're talking about the base model here like this is really really good and you're not having to pay a really high premium i mean it is like it's still pricey 2400 but you are really getting your money's worth as it is one of a kind and it performs at that high level so yeah that's my conclusion take from that what you will i haven't really provided much tests just because you know there's plenty of videos out there on youtube i'm just kind of giving you my first hand experience and my opinions having used it for as long as i did and you know my take on this mac and who i think it's for and whether you should buy it or not so i hope i've helped you in that anyway i have a video coming soon which is a whole desk setup based upon this macbook i also have a macbook accessories video coming soon so i've got a lot coming out soon based on this mac among other tech but yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please 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 subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a like and comment for the sake of the algorithm it helps me out Check out my Instagram at the Ramiel Nagar for behind the scenes perspective and just kind of seeing, you know, what I'm up to. Everything goes up in there first. So go check that out. Anyway, I hope you guys liked it. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Salam.